we just want to tell you. Oh God. That because you loved us, you teach us how to love ourselves. And because we love ourselves, we can love our neighbors as ourselves. And because we love our neighbors and ourselves, we love you. You wrap us in your arms and you tell us that we are worthy. You whisper in our ears and you say in a world that is full of hate, you say, I love you. in a world that tries to hold us captive in chains and bondage, you love us into freedom. So we love you, oh God, more than anything this world can offer. And so, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable, O God, our rock and our redeemer. It's in the precious and matchless name of Jesus we pray. Let all God's people say amen, amen, and amen. So look, the truth of the matter is this. It is written that anyone who has faith in Christ will do the works that Christ does and greater works besides these. And anything that we do in God's name, in Christ's name, in the power of the Spirit will be done. So let's create something beautiful, beloved. Let's create something marvelous and glorious, something that turns heads. Let's create something that sings, Jesus, we love you more than anything. So we will do everything in our power to make a difference. So let's create something because we love you more than anything. We will do everything in our power to make a difference because Jesus, you made a difference in our lives. So we want to make a difference in this world. Because Jesus, you've made a difference in our lives, we want to make a difference in the lives of others. Why? Because Jesus said in the gospel, according to St. John, which Ruby read, the truth of the matter is this, anyone who has faith in Christ will do the works that Christ does and greater works besides these. Let the church say amen. What an awesome invitation, what amazing opportunity, what a huge responsibility it is. And it is written also that to whom much is given, much is required. To whom much is given, much is expected. And we have been blessed extraordinarily. We have been blessed to be a blessing. You see, beloved, we are, as the scriptures say in Ephesians chapter 2, which is our anchor scripture, we are God's work of art, created in the image of God to do good things that God created us to do from the beginning. Turn to your neighbor and say, from the beginning. These words are echoed by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians, our anchor scripture for 2023, this year of creativity. We are called to create because we have been created in the image of God. We are called to do good works because God did a good work in us. And because God did a good work in us that will always come to completion, 
we are called to complete the work that God has set us out to do. So let's create. We who are created in Christ Jesus to do great things, let's create something that will last. Let's create something that will turn heads. Let's give them something to talk about. Let's create something beautiful together, beloved. Our world is so ugly, we need to create beauty. Our world is so ugly with mass shootings and, 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 and violence and, and, and wars and rumors of wars. We hear what's happening in Sudan. We hear what's happening in, in, right here at home, all over the world. The world is so ugly, we are called to create beauty because we were beautifully, fearfully, and wonderfully made in the image of God. Therefore, we are called to create, to reflect the image of God so that the image of God might be reflected in the world. And although the world is so ugly at times, still it is so beautiful. Because we look around and see each other's face and the beauty that lives in each and every one of us. Look around, beautiful people. Look around and see each other. You who are created beautifully in the image of God, we together are the church called to create beauty, to do great things, to be even in the midst of trials, tribulations, wars and rumors of wars, be encouraged today. Bring courage in. Because courage means to take heart. So even as our hearts are broken, again and again, be encouraged, take heart, and draw in the love of God that gives us courage to do courageous things in the world. Because Bernice Johnson Reagan is correct when she writes and sings Ella's song, Inspired by Ella Josephine Baker, we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. There is sweet honey in the rock. We who believe in freedom will not rest until it comes because there is one who loved us into freedom. His name is Jesus. And the name of Jesus empowers us to do great things. As we follow the one who loved us into freedom, we are given what we need in order to do freedom work. We are called to create life and we are called to live in creation. We are called to do great things, in fact, even greater things. Isn't that amazing? Like Jesus does great things, has done great things, uh, healed the sick, raised the dead, made those who were unable to walk, made them walk. Those who were unable to perceive, to see the thing that God was doing in their midst, he gave them sight. Jesus did great things and says to us, we are called to do even greater. What an awesome and powerful gift. What an awesome and powerful responsibility. So what are those works that we are called to do? Glad you asked. Really simple. Three simple things that we are called to create. Community, community center, and communion. I got to get over to Old West, so I'm going to make this quick, and, and, and we're going to go to the table, and we're going to be on our way. Amen? We're called to create community, a place of belonging, where you are able to discover, uncover that which has been hidden by a world that does not want us to shine. We are given, we are called into a community that says each and every one of us belongs. You matter here. 
You matter here at this place called Union. Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody ought to put their hands together. Each and every one of us gifted beautifully, created wonderfully, and we are called to use the gifts that God has given unto us, that has blessed us, so that we might bless others. This is a place of belonging where we use our gifts and our time and our talents to make a difference because Jesus has made a difference in our lives. This is why today we will have our food packing day, food pantry packing day. Just after worship, we give thanks to John Jemison, to Ruth Jemison, uh, to Ruth Ann Brown, to Heaven Shower, to all those who have been diligently working often behind the scenes during the week in the middle of the day making like literally providing so that we might provide provisions for those who are food insecure and there's more than you would realize so today we gather as the people of god to be able to roll up our sleeves and to collectively practice what we preach and there's something in the doing when we do mundane, simple tasks alongside of neighbor, that we build community and, real, and, we, and we start to get to know each other's story as we have conversation with somebody that we might not have met before. That through service, we might connect and go deeper in our connection to God and our connection to neighbor and our connection to Self. I'm so glad that, that it was so wonderful this week to just get the RSVPs coming into office at Union Boston, that, that there's a hunger to do good as we combat the growing food insecurity that is present here in Boston and beyond. So we give thanks to the justice and advocacy team and the food pantry team and the work area on adult ministry that has been faithful in, for more than 50 years so that we might serve we are called to serve union. We are called to create community. And, and, and I, I love that, that, you know, in Bible study, we gather. We gather in so many ways. The Union Reads Book Club, the Seniors Lunch Club on Thursday, Wednesday morning meditation, and Bible study, a place of belonging. And this past Wednesday, since Pastor Kyle was on vacation, uh, and I had a conflict as I provide leadership in the conference, uh, there were some people who said, well, just because the pastors ain't here don't mean we're not supposed to meet. Right? It's in our DNA that the Wesleyan movement that the people called Methodist, in fact, was a lay-led movement. That because when there was not enough clergy in the early days, the colonial period in the 19th century, and that the people only celebrated communion once every month, Right, because, that's, because the pastors were on a circuit, horseback riding across a region. That's why we celebrate, that the tradition of celebrating communion once a month comes from this tradition when there was actually a scarcity of clergy. So the people organized and they were church together even in the absence of the pastor. So the, the people gathered, and, and, and they, they gathered this, this Wednesday uh, for Bible study uh, because they believe that there is power in community and that we need to continue to support one another. As we build this community center together, what a vision, what a calling it is to use this glorious building to do good works in the community, in a, a neighborhood, in a city where public institutions, public spaces are rapidly, continuously being converted into private uh, industry, into luxury, condo. We have a public space that is called to serve. Somebody ought to say amen. Right. We, we love when Key Latch After School program, uh, affiliated with the Phillips Brook House at Harvard that serves uh, some of our children, neighbors in the South End, did not have a home. They came knocking and we said, welcome home. And the little kids, they said, oh, we love it here at Union because there's something about the hospitality, something about the welcome that calls each person who walks in the door and says, you belong here. You are welcome here, and we give thanks that as, I mean, it's like Kyle and I can barely have kept, keep up with the emails that are coming in as, as local organizations and, and choirs and concerts want to now use our space 
to do good. We've got meetings all week about a, another children's chorus that wants to meet here. We're partnering with Haley House, the friends of Titus Burial Park and friends of Harriet Tubman Park. Uh, we're getting reconnected with Tent City. There is so much that God is calling us to do. We are, because God through Christ Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit did great things. We are called beloved to do great things right now in this place. Somebody ought to say great things. Somebody type in the chat, great things. Let me, okay, listen, listen, I, I, I got to go. Um, I got to go. I get excited about Jesus. I get excited about what we're doing in this place here today. Uh, this summer, we're about to re-roof the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got pictures for y'all because we went, look up in the sanctuary here. We went up in this here attic. You know there's an attic over this, these things? I, I'm gonna show you some pictures, uh, cause we climbed up there. It was actually, come on, Lola, can you pull up these pictures real quick? Look at this. That, yeah, how many of y'all knew that that little hatch was there? Right when you walk in. Let's go to the next slide. And keep going. That's me getting ready. And, and there you go. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, uh, yeah, I was harnessed in because they said, I didn't go too far because they said, if you miss one of them beams, you coming through this plaster. <laughs> and th those are our, that's our structural engineers, Gabe and, and John and Jillian. Put your hands together for them. <laughs> they, they checked all of the structural columns and trusses and supports that we might re-roof to continue to preserve this building that God has gifted us 27,000 square feet in the south end of Boston, that we, because we have been blessed with space, might create a place of belonging to do great things. The conversion of our newly acquired parsonages in Brighton and Everett to become affordable housing for seminarians is already underway, already underway. So that following the model that we started two years ago, converting our Roxbury Parsonage into the Hilda Evans House, beginning this August, our newly acquired Brighton property and Everett property will do the same. And the meeting that we have at Old West our lay leader, Ruby Blake, is accompanying me so that we might collectively join forces, pastoral teams, lay leadership, pool our resources so that we might lean more deeply into the home and table initiative that literally creates sanctuary and home and housing that literally creates communion from our community centers and the communities that we are developing amongst one another because communion is so much more than a religious ritual. Communion sustains us. It sustains us spiritually as we do the social justice work Transformation. We come to the table to be fed because there are those who are starving. And there are others who are trying to starve us of our vision for what might be. So we come to the table to be refreshed, to be inspired, to be fed. Because the truth of the matter is this that we are called to do great works and follow the great one, his name is Jesus, who on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. 
so that you might be the body of Christ together. And likewise, after the supper was over, he took the cup and he blessed it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of Christ's mighty acts, as we remember the work to which we have been called and we put it back together again, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again.